Kane, take us back to uh, your old stomping ground, the Adelaide Oval on Friday night. It was one of the games of the year, I, I thought, and there was a lot of physicality. There's a Van Royen free kick against off the ball that Jeremy Finlayson kicked. But just in terms of the way, uh, the questions around Port Adelaide coming in was, could the young midfield match it with the star-studded Melbourne midfield? And they did that. Uh, and they, they matched it really well. Plus nine in clearances, plus 13 in entries. And with a forward line with no Dixon, no Marshall, no Georgiades, no Rioli, I thought, you know, the way that they were able to shuffle um, Ryan Burton forward and Darcy Byrne Jones and quell the influence of Lever and May was significant, Brownie. But yeah, one seven in a row. Are they legitimate Premiership contenders? I probably don't see them in that conversation yet. Why? I just think that the ruck is going to be an issue for them and when they come up against teams with big powerful forwards I still think they're undersized in defense but I've been really impressed you've been talking about Zach Butters since he came into the competition how good he can be so the goal on three-quarter time when they were headed by North Melbourne and the big 50 meter bomb his game was as good a game as you said Damo at any time in this year. I thought it was 40 bit disposals, how clean he was in those conditions to go with the two goals. He's a star. So a lot of midfielders get heaps of the ball and that's why Zach Merritt stood out last night. The ones that can use it so well, uh, they're the ones that go to the next level and Butters right from the start in tricky conditions was prepared to take some hard kicks and drive forward with his legs and, and take ground. So it, your footy club can change the course of direction with one draft and that's what Rosie and Butters have done and then Horn Francis comes in so for the next 10 years they're set in the midfield so um, yeah it was a really impressive performance the interesting one TJ is is what they do with Ken Hinckley like he's coaching as well as any coach in the game we're seeing the celebrations here and the move to the bench the club has said August is the deadline before they're going to make a call it's a it's a tough one for them like why I, well, well, because I mean, it, he's just won seven in a row. Exactly right. So then why not sign him now? He's still out exactly, of contract, yeah. this yeah. coach. And they've said August. There's Gold Coast that may be looking. We sit next to Caroline Wilson who continually says, Lordo, that Stuart Jew will be moved on at the end of the year. There's West Coast and a conversation there. A club could, I think, you know, poach Ken Hinckley right now if they but want I, to. I, I mean, if you're, if you're Ken Hinckley, you'd be sitting back at the moment with the, 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 the biggest grin on your face mm -hmm. because of the critics who have now gone silent. They were every, they, the critics were everywhere. Absolutely after, they were. He was dead man. What, what if, say, they lose first week of the finals? Yeah. Though? Like, so that's where still Ken understands that um, it's, it's a brutal game. And, and so right now he's in a great, wonderful position. Yeah. He's, he's hungry, he's passionate, he's coach. That was a beautiful plan that he had. He, they kept the ball off Melbourne all night, didn't allow Lever and May to take yeah. their marks. Dave, remember how do you see it? I, I wouldn't underplay the, the knife's edge element to yeah. this season for him. I mean, it, it's absolutely forced him to be all in. And I know he's always been all in. That, that's his nature. Mm. I get that. But when there's no um, confirmation of what you're doing the next year, you've got no choice but to make the, the current situation work. And I reckon there's an added edge to, to, to that element of mm. it with, with what they're creating. But the, 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 the future being unknown is making so beautiful right now. It is a tricky position for them to be in, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Like it's yeah. one of the biggest calls in the in the club's history, really. Do, do you extend mm. this guy now, or do you let go of a coach who's coaching really well, and he's still one of the better coaches in the league? And then you run the risk of dipping at the start 100%. of next season, and you've then got to sort of justify to the supporter mm. base why you got rid of a bloke who, as it stands now, has won the past seven games. Agree. Anyway, uh, it's a brutal caper coaching, that's for sure. Let's go back to Friday night. Um, and it was a cracking game of football. Port Adelaide, I thought they dominated for three quarters. Melbourne had a patch yeah. in the third term where they just put the accelerator down. Zach Butters, 41 with two. Houston was great. Rosie was good. Um, and I thought Oliver was pretty good. He was well held. Petrarca kicked a couple of goals in the end as well. But let's get into the highlights. And first of all, I want to talk about this man, Zach Butters, because it was the complete game, Kane. Yes. I remember that Ken Hinckley, when he came in, said this kid is going to be something special. Now we're four or five years in and we're, we're just seeing that well, right Well, he now. likened him to Gary Ablett Jr. That, that was the praise that they had for yep. him. He yep. did. Now, he had injuries and significant injuries with his knee and some nerve damage uh, in his foot, which really hampered him. But he was pick 11. I think it was in the 2018 draft. So if you go back and it's easy that to do there. in hindsight, there's... 
you know, some players that went before him that perhaps shouldn't have. So him and Rosie, really nice mix. It is their midfield now, and you add Horn Francis and what he's been able to do. Willem Drew's a good player, and now Ollie Wines plays more of a support mechanism along with Travis Boak. Yeah, it's, good, it's a good midfield. I don't think they win the game if he didn't kick the goal on three-quarter time. So clutch. it would have been yeah. too far back. No, yeah, the momentum then was all with Melbourne. They kicked seven in a row. So not in a row, but they kicked seven goals in that third quarter. Uh, and Connor Rosie's the partner in crime for, for Zach Butters. He was, he was awesome. And I, we interviewed Butters after the game on 3AW and they spoke about, you know, I said, what about the size of binding Petrarca and Oliver? How do you cope with that? He said, our fast feet. We wanted to get them with fast feet. You know, and that's what they were. They were just uh, using the ball so well. You talked about wet conditions. No? Mm. They, they just took so many marks and didn't allow for Melbourne to set up Damo behind the ball. Then you add Jason Horn francis yeah. into the mix, who's only a season and a half into his career. And the, the effect he's already had, he hasn't had a bad game. Now, he's had bad moments within those games, but he has had a positive influence on, on every match of footy they've played this year. And I reckon he's probably been best on ground in a couple now, of them and, and best in the last quarter in a couple of others. They've now beaten Brisbane, mm. Melbourne, also yep. the Western Bulldogs. So they've taken some big scalps as well. Mm. Yep. All right, let's get into the votes. And I thought that Zach Butters was the best man on the ground. I gave him a 10. Yeah, I didn't yes. think he could have done anything. Alice, Connor Rosie, Houston and also <laughs> Oliver.